All right, um, today we're going to go over the absolute value equations worksheet number two. It's a white piece of paper. It's back and front. There's 10 questions on the front, all the equations. There's 10 more on the back, all inequalities with 10 number lines, okay? Now, to do the front side, there are equations. So you're going to write inside the bars twice. You're going to write the right, whatever, you're gonna write inside the bars, bars twice. You're never going to change anything into the bar, inside the bars. If you change something inside the bars, you made a big mistake. Step two, you set the first one equal to whatever the original one's equal to. If it's equal to two, you set it equal to, uh, equal to two. If it's equal to four, you set it equal to four. The second one, you change it to the opposite. So you set it equal to the opposite of whatever you had. All right. If it was equal to six, you set the second one equal to negative six. All right. Step three, you solve both using PEMDAS in reverse. PEMDAS backwards, just like we've been using. All right, moving on. All right, number one, you're going to, you have the absolute value of x minus 4 equal to 2. So step one says you're going to write inside the bars twice. So I write x minus 4, and I write x minus 4 again. Step two says I take whatever's here, and I write that equal to the first one. Here, I change the sign and make it negative 2. Step 3 says I use PEMDAS in reverse, so I have 4 to both sides. I get x equals 6. Add 4 to both sides. I get x equals positive 2. To check them, I plug it in. So the absolute, of six, absolute value of 6 minus 4, is that equal to 2? That's 6 minus 4 is 2. The absolute value of 2 is equal to 2. I have 2 minus 4 inside the absolute value. Is that equal to 2? I don't know. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2, so we're good to go. All right, number 2, same exact thing. Whatever I see in the middle, I write it twice. So I write 10 minus x, 10 minus x. Whatever I see right here, that's what it's equal to the first one. Uh, that's a positive 2, so I make it negative 2 for the second one. I solve using PEMDAS in reverse, so I get rid of the positive 10 first by subtracting. I get the opposite of x equals negative 8. I divide both sides by negative 1. I get x equals positive 8. Minus 10, minus 10. Opposite of x equals negative 12. Divide both sides by negative 1. That's what changes the sign. So I get positive x equals positive 12. Now I just plug it in. 10 minus 8 in the absolute value is equal to 2. 10 minus 8 is 2, so the absolute value 2 is 2. 12, 10 minus 12 inside the absolute value is equal to the absolute value of negative 2, which is in fact 2, just like we wanted. All right, so that one works. All right, number 3, we have the absolute value of negative 2 plus x equals 7. I write it twice, negative 2 plus x equals 7. The second time I write it, I change that 7 into a negative 7. Notice I didn't change inside the bars. I'm going to add 2 to both sides. I get x equals 9. I add 2 to both sides. I get x equals negative 5. I'm just going to check my work. Negative 2 plus 9 inside the bars is the absolute value of 7, which is 7, which is what I wanted. Negative 2 plus negative 5 inside the bars is the absolute value of negative 7 which is 7, which is what I wanted. All right, 3 is good. All right, number 4, we have 3x plus 1 in the absolute value equals 13. So I write 3x plus 1 twice. The first time it's equal to 13, I don't change a thing. The second time, the only thing I change is 13 to negative 13. I subtract 1 from both sides, I get 3x equals 12. Divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 4. Subtract 1 from both sides, 3x equals negative 14, divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals, I would leave it as negative 14 thirds because I'm kind of lazy. If you want to give me um, negative 4 and 2 thirds, that's okay as well. Um, I do not want a decimal, so no decimal for this one. Do not give me a decimal because that's an estimation. This is an exact answer. All right, check your work. 3 times 4 plus 1, 3 times 4 is 12, 12 plus 1 is equal to the absolute value of 13, which is 13. Now I'm putting negative 14 thirds, so 3 
times negative 14 thirds plus 1 equals the absolute value of negative 13, which is 13, which is what I want. Okay? That's it for number 4. All right, number 5. I write inside the bars twice. 5 minus 2x equals 4. 5 minus 2x equals negative 4. Remember, the only thing I change is I change those signs. It's the only thing that gets changed. All right? I subtract 5 from both sides. I get minus 2x equals negative 1. Divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. x equals positive 1 half. I would, gr I would take 0.5, but I prefer 1 half. Minus 5 from both sides. Minus 5 from both sides. I get negative 2x equals negative 9. Divide by negative 2. Divide by negative 2. x equals positive 9 halves. Once again, if you want to put um, 4 and a half, that's okay. If you want to put 4.5, I would take that. But um, I, prefer for, I prefer the fraction. Now I'm just going to check my work. Absolute value of 5 minus 2 times 1 half. 2 times 1 half is 1, so I get 5 minus 1. So the absolute value of 4, that equals 4. That's what I wanted. Now I get 5 minus 9 halves times 2, or 2 times 9 halves. Those 2's cancel, so you get 5 minus 9. So I get the absolute value of negative 4 which is 4, just like I wanted. Okay, that's it for 5. All right, so number 6, I write 2x minus 3 equals 5. Look, I didn't change anything. Or 2x minus 3 equals negative 5. That's the only thing that changed was after the equal sign. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. I get 2x equals 8, divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 4. Add 3. Add 3, I get 2x equals negative 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals negative 1. Now I'm going to check my work. Absolute value of 2 times 4 minus 3. 2 times 4 is 8, 8 minus 3, that's the absolute value of 5, which is equal to 5, which is what I want. Absolute value of 2 times negative 1 minus 3, I get negative 2 minus 3, which is equal to the absolute value of negative 5, which is 5, which is what I want. All right. That's it for uh, 6. All right, 7. I get negative 5 minus 6x inside the absolute value equals 7. So the first time I write it, I don't change anything. I get minus 5 minus 6x equals 7. The next thing, I change it to 5 plus 6x equals negative 7. All right. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. I get minus 6x equals 12. Divide by negative 6. Divide by negative 6. x equals negative 2. Minus 5 from both sides. Minus 5 from both sides. I get 6x equals negative 12. Divide by 6. Divide by 6. x equals negative 2. I'm going to plug in negative 2. Negative 5 minus 6 times negative 2. Negative 5 plus 12 is positive 7. The absolute value of positive 7 is 7. So negative 2 works for both. All right. That's it for 7. Number 8, I get the absolute value of 3 plus 3x equals 11. So I, have, um, I write it once. I get 3 plus 3x equals 11. I write it again. 3 plus 3x, notice I didn't change inside the bars, equals negative 11. I subtract 3 from both sides. I get 3x equals 8. Let's divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals, I'm going to leave it as 8 thirds. You might write um, 6 and 2 thirds, that's okay, or I'm sorry, not 6 and 2 thirds, 2 and 2 thirds. Um, no decimal here, no decimal. All right, because it's a, it's a repeating decimal, I, I don't want a decimal ever for this one. Subtract 3 from both sides, I get 3x equals negative 14. Divide by 3, divide by 3, I get x equals, I would have left it as negative 14 thirds, but if you want to give me um, negative 4 and 2 thirds, that's okay as well. Um, like Once again, no decimal. So now I'm going to plug it in. 3 plus 3 times 8 thirds. So 3 plus 3 times 8 thirds. See why I leave it as an improper fraction? It cancels out really easily. So 3 plus 8 is 11, so I get the absolute value of 11. And that is 11, just like I wanted. 
Now I'm going to do negative 14 thirds. So I said the absolute value of 3 plus 3 times negative 14 over 3. 3 is cancel. You get 3 plus negative 14, which is the absolute value of negative 11, which is 11, just like I wanted. All right, that's it for 8. All right, so number 9, you cannot just not attempt this if you don't understand fractions, all right? Because no matter what, the first thing you do is you write it 4 minus x over 2 equals 7. All right, that had nothing to do with fractions. It just was writing it once exactly what I see. Then I write it exactly what I see, 4 minus x over 2. This time it's equal to negative 7. Okay, I'm going to solve it. Even if that, no matter, even though that fraction is there, I still can subtract 4 first from both sides. So I get the opposite of x over 2 equals 3. Now, to get rid of that 2, I'm going to multiply by 2. To get rid of the negative sign, I'm going to multiply by negative 2. If I multiply this side by negative 2, I have to multiply that side by negative 2. The negatives cancel because the negative times the negative is positive. The twos cancel. I get x equals negative 6. Do the same exact thing here. I subtract 4 from both sides. I get negative x over 2 equals negative 11. Multiply both sides by negative 2. Because the twos cancel, the negatives cancel. So I get x equals positive 22. All right. Let's just check our work. Absolute value of 4 minus negative 6 over 2, that's a negative 3, so I get 4 minus a negative is plus 3, the absolute value of 4 plus 3 is 7, okay, because 4 plus 3 is 7, absolute value is 7, 7. Now I'm going to try 22, absolute value, 4 minus 22 over 2, 22 minus 2 is 11, so it's 4 minus 11, which is the absolute value of negative 7, which is 7. So those both work. That's it for 9. All right, number 10. I take whatever I have inside the bar. I write it twice. I don't care that there's a fraction there. I don't just give up because I see the fraction. That takes no fraction skills to just write it the way you see it. Then I'm going to write it again. Negative, the opposite of x over 3 plus 3. And this time I change that 6 to negative 6. That's the only difference. I change the sign the second time. Now, even though there's a fraction there, I still subtract 3 first. That's what we've always done. We get rid of addition. We get rid of addition. I get minus x over 3 equals 3. Now, I'm going to multiply by 3 to get rid of the 3. I'm going to multiply by a negative because the negative times the negative is a positive. So the, the negative times the negative makes the positive. If the 3s cancel, you get x. If I multiply the left side by negative 3, I have to multiply the right side by negative 3. So I get negative 9. Same thing here. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. I get negative x over 3 equals minus 9. I'm going to multiply by 3 to make the 3s cancel. I multiply a negative to make a, make a positive x. So I get x equals, and I multiply the right side by negative 3. Negative 9 times negative 3 is positive 27. All right. I'm going to plug this in. The opposite of negative 9 over 3. That's a negative. A negative makes positive 9 over 3 plus 3, so I get 3 plus 3, so I get the absolute value of 6 is 6, just like I wanted. The negative 27, because it's the absolute value of negative, the opposite of 27 over 3, that's it. This right there is negative 9. 27 over 3 plus 3. So negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. The absolute value of negative 6 is 6. All right? And that's it for 10. All right, so absolute value inequalities. That's the whole back page. Step one is just the same exact thing that we did before. You write inside the bars twice. You never change anything inside the bars. Step two, the first time, you write the same inequality and the same sign. So whatever's after the inequality, you don't change anything. The second time, you flip the inequality and you take the opposite of whatever is after the inequality. All right. Step three, solve using PEMDAS. Um, don't forget, you must graph on number line. Okay. Finally, guys, just for, for, um, things we got to remember. If your original problem, so if the original has a greater than or a greater than or equal to, it's an or. All right. 
And that means that's what your graph should look like. So you should have two arrows going over, away from each other. If it's less than or less than or equal to, it's an and, and you're not going to have any arrows. Or they're going to be pointing at each other. And don't forget this rule. This is a big idea. A lot of people forget this. If you multiply or divide by a negative number, then you flip the inequality. So sometimes you might end up flipping the inequality twice because you always flip the inequality to start. All right, so number 11, the absolute value of x plus 3 is greater than 1. Step 1, you write it x plus 3, then I write x plus 3. Step 2, the first time I change nothing. I write greater than, I write 1. Now, I changed both signs, so it was greater than, I flipped it, and then I'm going to change the sign from 1 to negative 1, all right? Now, remember, this is an or, because it's greater than right there, all right? Subtract 3 from both sides, I'm using PEMDAS in reverse, I get x is greater than negative 2, minus 3, minus 3, x is less than negative 4. Remember... Negative 4 should be the first thing on your number line because it's smaller than negative 2. So I'm going to put negative 4 here. I'm going to put negative 2 there. They're open circles because there's no bar. So I put open circle, open circle. It's greater than 2, negative 2, so it goes this way. It's less than negative 4. To check it, I'm going to check negative 3. And now remember, negative 3 should be bad. So when I plug in negative 3, it should not work. So the absolute value of negative 3 plus 3, is that greater than 1? I get the absolute value of 0 is greater than 1. That's false, just like I thought it would be. So that means these are both good. Okay? That's it for 11. All right, number 12. I have the absolute value of x minus 7 greater than or equal to 4. I'm going to write this twice. x minus 7. x minus 7. Greater than or equal to 4. I did not change it. I'm going to flip both of these. So I'm going to flip both. It was 4, now it's negative 4. It was a greater than or equal to, now it's less than or equal to. Remember, it's an or because that's greater than. All right, add 7 to both sides. I get x is greater than or equal to 11. Add 7 to both sides. I get x is less than or equal to positive 3. I make my number line. I'm going to put... 3 here, 11 here. They are closed circles because the bar is there. It's greater than 11, so I shade to the right. It's less than 3, so I shade to the left. And it looks like my OR graph. Um, I'm going to check 4 because 4 should be false. Remember, this 4 is in the bad section. It's not shaded. So when I check 4, it should be force, false. 4 should be false. All right? Absolute value of 4 minus 7, is that greater than or equal to 4? 4 minus 7 is negative 3, so the absolute value of negative 3, is that greater than or equal to 4? And that's false, just like we thought it would be. All right, good. That's it for 12. All right, 13, I have the absolute value of the opposite of x over 3 plus 6 greater than 2. Step 1, write that twice. The absolute value of x over 3 plus 6 is greater than 2. It's an or because it's greater than. So I write the absolute value of x over 3 plus 6. This time I flip 2 and the inequality, so it becomes less than, and it becomes negative 2. All right. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. I get negative x over 3 is greater than negative 4. I want to get rid of the fraction, so I'm going to multiply by 3. I want to get rid of that negative sign, so I make it a negative 3. Because the 3's cancel, the negatives cancel. I'm going to multiply by negative 3 on both sides. Since that's negative, I'm going to flip this. So I flip this from greater than to less than. I get x is less than negative 12. Same thing over here, minus 6, minus 6. I get negative x over 3 is less than negative 8. Multiply by negative 3. Remember, negative 3 is a negative. 
So that means I'm going to flip that sign. I'm going to flip it. It was less than. It's greater than. So sometimes that happens where you end up flipping the inequality twice. We flipped it to start because that's the rule for the problem. And we flip it again because we, we, our rule says you divide by, you multiply by a negative, you flip it. So I get greater than 24 and I get less than negative 12. I'm going to put negative 12 right here. I'm going to, uh, I don't like it there. I'm going to put negative 12 right here. Put 24 right there which means zero is probably about right here. I like to put zero on all my graphs just to make sure I'm doing it right. It's an open circle. They're both open. It's shaded to the right because it's bigger than 24. It's shaded to the left because it's less than 12. And the good thing is that looks like an OR graph, so I'm good. I'm going to check zero. Remember, zero should be bad. All right, so zero should be false. So I put negative zero plus three. I get the absolute value. I get the absolute value of 6 is greater than 2, which is good. Okay? All right, 14, I get the opposite of negative 6x is greater than equal to 12. I still write it twice. I put minus 6x. Well, that's a terrible greater than or equal to sign. Greater than or equal to 12. It's an or because it's greater than or equal to. I put minus 6x is less than or equal to negative 12. Divide both sides by negative 6. That's a negative. That means I flip this. So it becomes greater than or equal to, turns into less than or equal to. I get x is less than or equal to negative 2. Divide by negative 6, divide by negative 6. I get x is greater than or equal to, because I had to flip it, positive 2. Make my number line. I have negative 2 here. There's 0. There's positive 2. They're both closed circles. All right. And I shade to the left and I shade to the right. I'm going to check zero. Zero should be false. All right, so zero should be false. I get is zero greater than equal, absolute value zero greater than equal to 12. That's false, just like I thought. All right, that's it for 14. All right, 15, I have the absolute value of 3x plus 3 is less than or equal to 9. So I write it once, 3x plus 3, less than or equal to 9. Didn't change a thing. It's an and because it's less than, all right? This time I write 3x plus 3. I'm going to flip my sign and my inequality. So it become less than or equal to turns into greater than or equal to. 9 turns into negative 9. Minus 3 both sides. I get 3x is less than or equal to 6. Divide by 3, divide by 3. x is less than or equal to 2. Minus 3, minus 3. 3x is greater than or equal to negative 12. Divide by 3, divide by 3. x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Now remember, negative 4 is less than or is smaller than 2. So when I make my number line, I have to put negative 4 on the left. So negative 4 has to go here. I'm going to put 2 right here. That means 0 is about right here. Um, I'm going to put closed dots because of the bar, and I shade in between. Now, that means when I check zero, it should be good, all right, because it's in the shaded section. So I put the absolute value of 3 times 0 is 3 plus 3, so the absolute value of 3 should be less than or equal to 9. 3 is less than or equal to 9, so it's true. It's good, all right? That's it for 15. All right, 16. We have 16 plus m over 2 inside the absolute value is less than 9. So our first thing I do, even if the fractions confuse you, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to write it twice. All right, it's an and because it's a less than right there. So I write 16 plus m over 2, and this instead of less than, remember, I'm going to flip, every, flip the sign and the inequality, so it becomes greater than negative 9. I subtract 16 from both sides to start. I get m over 2 is less than negative 7. I multiply by 2 to make the fraction go away, so I get m is less than negative 14. Now, I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. I get m over 2 is greater than um, negative 25. I multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction. I get m is greater than negative 50. Notice I didn't flip it, even though it's a negative answer, because that 2 is positive. It does not make me flip anything again. So now I make my number line. 
Negative 50 is on the left of my line because it's smaller than negative 14. All right, we'll put negative 14 right here. We'll put zero over here. They're open circles because there's no bar. I shade in between, all right? Um, I think a good number to pick is negative 20. So I'm going to pick negative 20. Negative 20 should, be, should work because it's in the shaded region. So when I plug in negative 20, it should work. So 16 plus negative 20 over 2, that should be less than 9. Negative 20 over 2 is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 16 is 6. So is the absolute value of 6 less than 9? That's good. All right. So that one did work. All right. We have the absolute value of 2x minus 8 is greater than 6. So I write it once. 2x minus 8 greater than 6. It's an or because that's a greater than. I write 2x minus 8. I flip the inequality from greater than to less than. I flip the 6 from positive to negative. All right. Now I'm just going to solve using primitives backwards. Add 8 to both sides. I get 2x is greater than 14. I divide by 2, divide by 2, x is greater than 7. Add 8, add 8, 2x is less than 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x is less than 1. 7 and 1. All right, remember, 1 is on the left of my line because 1 is smaller than 7. So I put 1 right here. I'll put 1 right here. I'll put 7 right here which means zeros right there. Open circle, open circle. It's bigger than seven, so I shade to the right. Notice when I shade to the right, I make my own arrow show up. When I shade to the left, I make my own arrow show up because it's an or graph. It has two arrows just like I thought. I'm going to check um, two. Remember, two should be bad. Two should not work. So I put the absolute value of two times two minus eight. Is that greater than six? Two times two is four. Four minus eight is negative 4. Is the absolute value of negative 4 bigger than 6? It's false, just like we thought it should be because it's in the bad region, which means it's not going to work. All right, that's it for 17. All right, 18, we have um, the absolute value of x minus 2 is greater than 0. So first thing we do is we're going to write it twice, x minus 2 greater than 0. It's an or because that's greater than, and I write it x minus 2 again, and I have to flip both. Now the tricky one with this one is, I make it less than, but you can't flip zero. It just stays zero. You still have to do both sides, with, even with it being zero, because this the sign, the inequality flips. I add two to both sides. I get x is greater than two. I add two to both sides. I get x is less than two. Make my number line. Because they're the same, I only have one point on my line. I just put two. It's an open circle. I shade to the right. I shade to the left. This just means every point, every number, except two, will work. Okay? That's it. 18 is done.